Hey out there and welcome. So I bet you're as excited as me that tons of Kubernetes grid our upstream online Kubernetes distribution running in your private cloud, in the public cloud or at the edge is actually publicly available and I'm going to show you how easy it really is um, to deploy that tons of Kubernetes grid onto VMware Cloud and AWS and make use of the great features like the storage integration um, or how easy it is to expose your applications you deploy in Kubernetes to the outside world. So to get started, um, just you need to go to vmware.com slash go slash get TKG and download the necessary product binaries. So um, that's depending on your operating system, a CLI. We're going to need for me that's the Linux CLI because I'm using Ubuntu desktop here, then you will need the worker node image and you will need the load balancer OVA image here. So download those and then we're good to go. So now that we've downloaded all the necessary files, we can proceed with our actual installation. The first thing I want to do is um, to get the TKG CLI up and running. So we downloaded that for Linux. Um, you need to download it appropriate to your operating system. And um, I'm just going to move this to somewhere in my path. For me, that's user local bin. And uh, I will check the functionality quickly. So, okay, it seems TKG is running. Uh, it's version 1.0.0. So the next thing we want to just um, get running is to have like the templates into our vSphere environment. And I'm just going to leverage um, GoVC to, impl uh, yeah, to import those templates, as we can see here. So first of all, with our HA proxy and secondly our node image which will be used for our master nodes and which will be used for our worker nodes. So let's start the installation with that. We're going to use the graphical installation wizard here. You can also use the CLI based one. So we're going to deploy on VMware Cloud and AWS. We want to connect to that and validate that we have the right credentials. We have a STDC data center here. And I'm going to provide my public key for the deployment. So if something goes wrong, I will be able to, to SSH to the nodes with this public key. I'm going to choose a development cluster here and name this TKG management. Here I need to select the API server load balancer template which we uploaded before. We've created a resource pool for that one. We've created a folder for that one previously and we will deploy to the workload data store. So we will deploy to our TKG on VMC network, which is DHCP enabled, and we will leave the default CIDR for the, yeah, for the cluster networking of the Kubernetes networks. Last, we need to choose our OS image for the worker master node, which we uploaded previously. Lastly, we're going to review our configuration and hitting the deploy button. So this will now spin up a local Kubernetes cluster in kind, Kubernetes in Docker, with our given configuration, and will then take care about spinning up the actual nodes into vSphere and pivoting our configuration of the local bootstrap cluster to that management cluster. Our management cluster was successfully created and we've been told that we're now able to create our first workload cluster. So we're going to create our first workload cluster with the dev development plan and we're going to name it TKG Workload 01. The context was automatically set um, that we can interact with our new workload cluster here. Um, so let's check if our cluster is doing well. So let's have a look at the nodes. And let's have a look at the pods which are running. So as we can see, so they are up and running and the cluster is in a healthy state. So as you can see, our workload cluster consists of a master node and a worker node. So 
From now on, I'm able to manage this cluster via the TKG CLI. Let's say, for instance, I deployed this with just one worker node, but uh, my application will actually need more worker nodes to run on that cluster. So what we can easily do now is we can use um, the TKG command to scale up my cluster named TKG workload 01 and give a worker node count. So for instance, let's say I want to scale this to 10 worker nodes. Now we can see that TKG actually takes care about not only cloning the vSphere VMs, but also updating the cluster configuration and adding them to the particular workload cluster. This scaling works in both directions, so I can now scale my cluster again down to three nodes. TKG is leveraging cluster API to extend the core functionality of Kubernetes to bring the declarative um, style of management for the cluster creation configuration to Kubernetes, not only for applications, but also for Kubernetes clusters. Therefore, we are now able to inspect our cluster object instantiated when we created the first workload cluster. We're going to deploy Rocket Chat, which leverages persistent storage from vSphere for its MongoDB database. So therefore, we're going to use a storage class in Kubernetes pointing to the vSAM data store, so the workload data store in particular, to make use of that. So now our storage class is created, pointing to this data store. Let's deploy our actual application. Helm is a packet manager which makes it really easy for us to deploy Kubernetes applications because it takes care about the dependencies. I'm having a look now. I can actually see that Rocket Chat has spin up multiple things which it needs. It has as well spin up a load balancer. So we deployed a customer provided load balancing solution on this cluster as well. And if I have a look at the persistent volumes, I can see that there was a volume automatically created for the MongoDB of Rocket Chat having a volume ID with a capacity of 8 GB. So if I'm switching to my workload data store now and to the container volumes, I will see that actually I can monitor and see exactly this volume, including the labels which have been attached by Kubernetes. So this is a very tight integration of Kubernetes and vSphere. So as we can see, our application has already an uh, external load balancer IP, but it, this is an internal IP I can just reach within like the network we're living in. So let's say I want to make this application because it's a chat application um, yeah, available to the outside world. And I can easily do that just by going to my VM Cloud and AWS console. And I requested a public IP, a new public IP, which is just in here. So I can do that with one click for chat.alexdesk.cloud you know, because this is the domain I own. And then I can simply switch to my NAT rules and create a new NAT rule to forward all traffic hitting that IP to my internal VM. So let's call this chat. Yeah, um, The public IP, I will actually use the one which we just created. I just want to have HTTP traffic with the port 80. And I want to match this to the internal address, which we just saw in the console. Yeah, I want to have logging enabled here because I want to see what's going on. And I have added this rule successfully. So let's have a look if this actually works. Nice. So now leveraging chat.alex.cloud, I can actually see that, oh, somebody posted here already and I can add something as anonymous so feel free to leave a message should it be up still probably the stdc is expired by then i hope you enjoyed this demonstration about tensor kubernetes grid and how easy it really is to deploy a kubernetes cluster and your kubernetes application on top of vmware cloud on aws and expose them to the outside world